Have you ever wanted your ZBrush sculpts to look like it was actually sculpted in clay? This video is for you. Okay, so we're in ZBrush and we just have this Dynamesh sphere that we're going to be using. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is just press divide a couple times. Give me some more resolution to work with. And I am going to first change the silhouette. So if you think about a ball of clay in your hands or Play-Doh or something like that, that you use as a kid, as much as you would try to make it a perfect sphere, it's never gonna be a perfect sphere. What I would recommend is this. I'm gonna subdivide this a couple times, and before I even touch thick skin, I'm going to kind of make this more clay-like with H polish. So, H polish, large brush size, turn off symmetry, we do not want that on. And I'm just gonna hit really lightly back and forth some of these forms. I'm not being too careful with it. Anytime something gets really sharp, I can just come back and then hit each kind of angle, each corner, to really nail that down. I really want this to be just like a little ball of clay in your hand. Don't be afraid to really push it at times. You can do several different passes. You can see just really quickly, I'm getting something like this. I'm going to rotate around. This part is super, super spherical. I'm just going to hit that edge, throw that off a little bit. If anything's too sharp, we don't want that because this is not like a gemstone or anything like that. You can just come in here. This is kind of the basis. There's many ways to do this. Like you could use the clay brush. We will use this eventually. There's so many ways to do this. This is not the only way. This is the way that I like to do it. And honestly, let's say it's like sitting on a table. If you just leave clay out, just the weight of the clay, I'm going to make it flat on the bottom. We'll use clip curve to do that. But don't forget with clip curve, you go ahead and draw out your line. Hold shift to make it. Uh, perfectly straight and then if i hold spacebar i can just move this wherever i want i just want this a little bit chopped off there so it's kind of like sitting on a hard surface all right this is looking much better so the next step that i would take is kind of like another pass at this but this time i am going to turn on thick skin this won't be the final thick skin this is just another pass at this so i'm going to press thick skin and this one is going to be relatively thick so we're going to do like 15 or so and this time i'm going to use clay so i'm not even using a thick skin brush you can use whatever brushes you want when thick skin is turned on for example if i use clay buildup you know by default clay buildup just like keeps going going and going and going and going and going but let's turn on this just to show you an example go 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 and then it's going to hit that wall that distance and then it's going to stop same thing if i carve in go 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 and it's going to stop but we are going to make this roughly 15 and we're going to use clay so take a look at this we're just going to use the normal clay brush and let's go ahead and hit some of these forms so what i like to do is come in here and just make these kind of random shapes these kind of islands in the negative space or start by holding alt and carve in a little bit just do some of these little islands all over the place imagine this being like uh, just the ocean and you're just creating these little forms of water and then you can build up some of these forms um, and just kind of go back we don't want to do all over the place just kind of hit here and there and you're going to see it's going to start forming these flat spots and these valleys but it's also doing like these creases like right here so if you've ever worked with actual clay depending upon the clay obviously but play-doh i use monster clay a lot uh, there can be like these little cracks and crevices unless you smooth out this oil-based clay um, and this gives it a really nice kind of look so i'm just going to hit some of those yeah that looks neat down there at the bottom a little chunky some of those angles are just really really sharp so this is a great time to come in here and uh, either carve in build up around making it feel a little bit more natural cool so we'll call that good but i'm gonna keep all the settings the same with thick skin i'm gonna go ahead and change this to spray so take a look at this this is probably my favorite approach to this i'm gonna hold down alt and instead of i'm doing exactly the same thing but it's just gonna give me this little bit of texture to this so let me undo so this is going to give me that little bit of texture there we go so you can see i'm doing the same thing with those islands it's that spray is spraying all over the place which is super super helpful and honestly this is the approach that i like the best so i hold down alt first then i can come in here and quickly start building up some of those land masses so to speak making some of those dots those crevices just those little imperfections in the clay ball that you would see in real life this would be very important pull up reference get an idea of what kind of thing you're going for um you can also get like very smooth clay balls go ahead and break up that just a little bit more rotate around see what i'm liking we have two more passes so this is going to be a much smaller thick skin so we're going to press thick skin and this is going to be much smaller so let's do like a five or somewhere in the ballpark there and this time we're actually going to use a thick skin brush 
So by default, ZBrush has thick skin. I hate this one. But Pablo over at ZBrushGuides.com, this is not sponsored. I would love to collaborate with somebody as great as Pablo, but he creates awesome stuff. Go check him out, ZBrushGuides.com. He's got some thick skin brushes out there. I really like two and three. We're gonna stick with two, I think. Let's take a look. So you can see this, this is the amazing thing about thick skin is that it's not gonna screw up these wonderful details that I have. This, I can come in here and just really go back and forth all over the place if I wanted. I don't think that looks very great doing it that way. I'm gonna come in here and just kind of just back and forth, hold alt if I want to, but it's retaining that detail. That little carved out section is still there. It's kind of just like pushing the clay along the surface. That's what it's, what it's designed to like feel like. That's what I like. This feature, thick skin, it is so much fun to play with. And you can see that this is really just giving us a nice texture. It kind of feels like my fingers were pressing this into the clay at times. You can use a larger brush size if you want. I kind of like that smaller brush size kind of feel. And let's just finish this up quickly. Okay, so you get the idea. This is starting to feel kind of like a clay something. The last step is going to be just adding some fingerprint details to this. So that is easy peasy. I'm gonna go to my standard brush. Um, once again, many ways to do this. Standard brush, and I'm gonna go grab an alpha. I've actually grabbed three separate fingerprints. Um, these are just fingerprint alphas. You can find these all over the place online. Just a black and white image that I can use as an alpha. So once I download onto my computer, I can go to import and then bring these bad boys in. Uh, so this is a good one, and I'm gonna change this to drag rectangle. I'm gonna turn thick skin off, but honestly, it's probably wise to do a layer. So under layers, I'm gonna press new layer, and it's already recording. When I do that, this is recording, which means I can come in here, drag my fingerprint out, stop recording. I have this layer and I can dial in the thickness that I need. All right, so let's undo that. There we go, add a new layer. And the one thing that you probably need to think about is like, how large is the sphere in real life? So I don't want to have a fingerprint that is, you know, a fingerprint that is that big. And then over here, have a fingerprint that is that big. Like that just does, that's not logical. That doesn't make any sense. And a lot of new uh, sculptors or just new whatever, new people who've never done this before, maybe didn't think about it. They would just come in here and do stuff like this and not really care about the size. They'll have one tiny little fingerprint and one giant one. It, it doesn't, doesn't make sense at all. Don't do that. So what I'm gonna do is just keep that in mind. Let's see the resolution here. I could use another subdivision level. Stop recording. Now we're at, you know, close to a million polygons. I'm gonna grab my standard brush, standard brush, drag rectangle, and I just went ahead and downloaded these alphas from the internet. It's easy to find. It's really just a black and white image. And then under alpha, you go to import, bring it in. All right, layers, we're gonna press new. I've got my standard brush, drag rectangle, and my alpha on. It's all good to go. I'm going to left click and drag, and I'm gonna say, yep, that thumb is gonna be roughly that size. So I'm going to keep that in mind when I am placing these all different directions, roughly that size. Don't be afraid to overlap. A little bit of stretching here and there is a-okay. Actually a good thing because if you were thinking about rolling this ball of clay in your hand, you aren't actually, like you're going to be touching all over this ball of clay. There we go. Don't be afraid to use another alpha. Let's go ahead and grab this one. This is more of like a full finger kind of thing. Put those around. There we go. And let's try that last one. Just see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. Maybe like a, a middle finger and an index finger. Pretty cool. Things are looking good. Let's go ahead and stop the recording. Now I have this slider. You can do many layers, but I'm just going to take this slider and dial that down a little bit. So let's go to that side that I really like. I like this side. Let's dial that down. Just a hair. So we have the subtleness of this. You could also come in here. Some of those final touches might be something like, let's bake this. Let's say I love it. We're going to bake that. That's good to go. So let's turn off thick skin and just see if that nudge will take us where we want. So I can like come in here and use that nudge brush and really just stretch some of these. Not all of them. Some of them are just a little too perfect. Don't be afraid to do a little bit of smoothing. So if you've ever smudged clay, you can tell sometimes you can see your fingerprint tracks and they just get, they're just stretched all over the place. 
So you can come in here and do some of that real fine tuning, just break up some of this stuff, and voila, you have created a relatively decent clay ball. 